Try that again. Hello. Good day to everyone. Hello, everyone. Good morning. We'll get started at five after. Can add your name and any items to the meeting agenda. Meeting notes posted in the Zoom chat, also in Slack. Hello all, we'll get started at five after. Meeting notes are in Slack and Zoom chat, calendar invite. Hello all, we'll get started in a couple of minutes, five after, and add your name and any items to the meeting notes, which are in the Zoom chat and Slack. All right, we can get started. Um, meeting notes are in the Zoom chat. You can add your name and any topics. Um, I'm not seeing any other new ones right now. Does anybody have something they'd like to add specifically? That's not yet on the agenda. Anything have anyone have something interesting from KubeCon they'd like to talk about? Yeah, there you go, Tal. Okay, well, I'll just have that on there. All right, I'm gonna hop right into some of these. So call up of love the closed items, interested party ticket got added um, this one let's see 
No, this isn't the main one. I'm going to jump right into the actual. So the interested party for those that haven't seen this, if you weren't in the last few meetings, we're shifting it to be individuals with the company or org that they're with. And this could be used for multiple purposes. One of them was the voting originally, but um, it's communicating um, the different groups and people that care about these things, which will be helpful when we're talking and collaborating with other groups so that they can say who's involved and how does this relate. So please add yourself there. Uh, I think there's a PR to add some reasoning at the top, but I'm not seeing it here. So I'm not going to worry about that. Go check that later. Um, tech leads, we've removed those for now until they're needed. Let's jump into the open PRs. <clears throat> if you have been working on some of the PRs, then you may have seen uh, the checks that are happening. There's multiple types of checks, including linting. And the PR process has been updated to say, at the moment, um, we would prefer that everything passes linting, but there's been, as we've been going through the whole repo, a lot of little updates. So it's not a hard requirement, but if, if you get whatever file that you're working on passing, then I think that would be good enough. But if you notice other stuff, of course, fixes on those things would be good. Uh, Taylor, uh, mm -hmm. uh, book is speaking actually, I, I was just going to comment for the uh, number 95. Yeah, I'm going to open that um, one. Let's I see. looked at uh, and, and got some uh, errors uh, from a markup or markdown linter, but mm -hmm. uh, they were not verbose, so I could really not pinpoint where it was the issue. All right. If you, if you check. Uh, sure. This might be helpful for other this, people that are uh, trying lint, to create yep. the PR. Super linter. All right, so this error is found. That doesn't, that's not very helpful. So you got to actually work your way back up. Well, wow, there's a lot of contents. Okay, so here's, it looks like there was a big, pretty big failure. That's interesting. Um, context. So this is talking about headers have to have a blank line around them surrounded by a blank line. I'm going to go back into the content. It looks like ah, you mean most like, of them that I'm seeing are there like that. So and, you need a, then yeah, you need a, a yeah, blank line above and a blank line below. Uh, or the blank line, actually. And yeah. there's, the, there's very strict checks about how many spaces or uh, whatever off the end of a line. So you might have some lines with spaces at the end. I think some of the like, template um, has some problems already. So I, I, I jumped into this problem as well when I submitted my PR. So this one would be simply like this. So if we do like that, now it adds a blank line. Yeah, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but uh, um, I will uh, try to do it in the background. All right. Um, or I can, I can work with you and get all those in. Let's see, what, what else do we have though on this one? Because this is one that we've had open for a while. Are we at a point other than those, I'll say minor linting issues? We could even, I would call that one minor, those type of things is minor and we can always come back and do a second PR to fix. What, what I would say is if we're getting lint failures we don't actually like very much, then I'm sure we have control over what lint rules the thing applies. Um, so if we want to basically get rid of rules because they cause us problems and have no benefit, then that is a perfectly acceptable approach. That's one thing. The other thing is, I think you've already identified that the linter produces terrible error messages. So 
either we figure out how to make it produce better ones or conversely we give people some clues as to how to read lint output one or the other because yeah. i mean you're not the only one i had the same problem when i was looking at this i got to the end of it eventually but realizing firstly how to find that a file has failed and secondly that that message is just a summary and there is more clues higher up basically giving you indications of what the failure is that one itself was a bit a leap of deductive reasoning that took some doing and it sounds like you're doing exactly the same on this call that you know okay eventually i found an error and it wasn't even the error i was looking for i wanted another error yeah sounds good I, i'm if actually there's a way to adjust the output would be nice for a special like errors for me on a test uh, testing framework usually you'd have a little bit more information at the end but this just says you had an error and it doesn't give you any context you have to scroll up but we can look at that yeah basically i i was looking at the error message directly and was did they have experience with that linter no, I would be able I'm to not sold that check. we should turn it off completely. Um, is that Victor? No, yeah. The, the other thing that I was thinking about is uh, I included like the make file. So mm -hmm. if you if you want to run it locally and don't wait until you submit the, the change and in the GitHub infrastructure, you can run make lint and that is going to run the linter locally. One thing that might be nice is um, for, I don't know if it'll do it, but some test output, you can have it not show so detailed on the ones that pass. And then it shows, it only um, shows the information when it fails. Is it, we're not really looking at like an entire pass fail for, I don't, I don't care about all the the positives that's which ones actually didn't pass all right but we can do that off and maybe just a ticket and do a round of um, adjustments on that we've heard a lot of the same feedback um other than lenting so what are the other things Luke, that we can work through i'm seeing some stuff here is is this something for this ticket or i mean pr do you want to open something new so essentially, I uh, went through all suggestions and uh, I accepted, uh, did my edits or uh, committed uh, the, the changes that were proposed um, mm -hmm. by a couple of people here. So I think the only uh, blocking issue is, uh, again, I, I didn't make it with this uh, lint code base. Um, the only thing that I uh, am seeing here is uh, one change requested by, by you, Taylor, but I think this might be an uh, uh, outdated thing because I accepted, made a commits already. All right. So, so this I, one I have the, the option is grayed resolved, out. Mm -hmm. It looks like. Is this one already split open, uh, split apart? This Jeff was asking about this, and I think I, I made the suggest edit based on what his feedback was. Did this one already mm -hmm. make it in? Yeah, I committed that one, so I don't have any more the, the option. All right, I'm going to resolve that then. Um, I think this was just a comment from... Jeffrey to. I mean, we obviously could have a, uh, a lot of follow up discussions and maybe yeah, some uh, uh, use cases uh, uh, branching out of this use case and then drilling down in some, some details. Um, I would honestly uh, prefer to leave it like that and then uh, come back to it in, in, in our discussions and then uh, drill down into some aspects. So you can consider this as a bit of uh, kind of umbrella uh, use case for a life cycle management of the infrastructure and uh, to that related uh, behavior of CNFs. 
Yeah, absolutely. And best practices um, could point to more than one use case, of course, a bit, um, since they can be used in more than one use case. So this one may be, as you're saying, like an umbrella larger one, and then we may have a best practice that also points to a more uh, focused small um, use case that, for example, test case even, if it gets down to that. All right, so I'm trying to find the one that you're saying there's still one open. Oh, is this? No, this is the one I just made. I'm just going to comment that since it's a, a lint fix. Oh, outdated. You must have already done I, it, and I'll resolve it. I found my uh, uh, linter problem. Mm -hmm. I think the last standing one with this blank uh, lines. Yeah. Because I skipped so one. Is but there now it should be in, in, in shape. So what, what is the one that was still in question? You said there was one item left that we haven't addressed. Scroll back down to the bottom. And then just click on what, where it shows like approvals and well, you just jumped it back up. Go Sorry. to the bottom where it shows like Very who's bad. approved, who hasn't, and just expand your thing that says request. Just yeah, change request. requested, and this is what, uh, and then you go on uh, three dots. Um, well, I don't think I can do it. It probably looks different for you than me. Let me see. To look at them. I'm not seeing anything that's like a committable change that's re no. remaining. So it may be that you've got everything and I can just mark Was it approved. Was the request, let me see, see a review. It is uh, <clears throat> related to the six, year, six days ago. Uh -huh. So if you look at the history six days ago, um, go from the bottom up. Yeah, this one. Uh, no, no, this is uh, eight Let's minutes. This, uh, one this one, right yeah, here. yeah. This, this is it's the showing it's, one. It's already it's showing outdated, so you may have already um, completed. But you need it. to approve, uh, I think, these. Yeah, changes. absolutely. So I can. That's what I'll do. I'm just. You, gonna... you go. You go down. Yeah. Or go. Yeah, I guess I could have done it from there. Go to the bottom and then uh, on your. It's too late. On... I'm. Our, I'll just do it this way. I think I'd yeah, cleared that, whatever that, that I is, had. That is uh, blocking. So we need one more to merge this. So that there's everything else has been addressed. Um, we, and I think Jeffrey, we um, committed all the changes that you requested. The l remaining ones, I think, were comments versus um, changes. Like we split one of the paragraphs to be our sentences to be easier to read and stuff like that. So let's see. And you've already approved it. Do we have any other approvals on the call? Is, any, is anyone? I know that a lot of people have been tagged over the last week. So Taylor, this is Robbie. Something happened with the configuration mm -hmm. that I'm no longer able to approve any PR for some reason. OK. I don't know how it works now. Have you guys changed? I don't know. I've just re-added you. Does anyone else want to approve and you're not on here? Hey, Rene, you're there. Oh, all right. While somebody is maybe uh coming back with the, with the feedback. I just noticed that the super linter is really painful. So it's now complaining about multiple trailing spaces or no trailing spaces. Yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't see anything except for um, spaces around stuff. So I'm willing to merge it with, with those. And then we can go back over and fix all the lint issues on a, another PR which would be a minor change, only requiring one approval.
All right. Um, you're already on this. We need one more approval. Yeah, I guess I, I can approve it. I mean, I can review later. later. Um, just give me a second. All right. Um, we'd just like to get this one in since it's it's a, been open for a while and over we keep approving and then there will be weeks later someone will have another comment and what we really want to do is those type of things should be another PR or add comments to the existing stuff rather than keeping it open for forever. All right, and I think Ian, if you can go through it too. So maybe you have to refresh the, the page. Okay, you think we have some more? Mm -hmm. Let's see. What do we have? All right, a whole set. Thanks, y'all. Let's merge it. Um, do we want to do a squash on this one? I don't remember and other some other folks I think y'all had made some comments about this. I, I would recommend it honestly, otherwise you just end up with a bunch of commits that send to say someone did a two line change, but I'm not telling you what it is. Um, I All think right. it would change history a little bit easier to kind of walk back if we do. All right, I'm going to make it like this then. I don't know who this was. I'm gonna I'll do that. That was me. I went and made a bunch of like grammar changes and whatnot. Okay, cool. Um, these that don't say anything, I'm gonna leave off. And then I'm keeping, okay, we don't need two, three victors. We don't need three, another victor. Um, let's grab them. All right. Yeah. All right. That doesn't seem right. Feels like there's a lot more on there. But there are two times your name there. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I think that others, one just auto populates if you like actually did like the inline commit I suggest and comment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if, if Vulk accepted it, then it like it pulls you in because then you like directly edited the document. All right. There we go. All right. We did it. Thank you. Oh, let's see. This might have been the interested party thing. Oh, it is. The one that I was referring to earlier. Um, okay, so there's a few other things. Um, the contribution comments around this. Um, oh, let's see what's interesting meeting stuff so if people are trying to encourage people to come then where the meetings are happening getting involved from uh, issues first issues this is about the linting stuff saying that um how to do it including the make file that victor mentioned earlier if you want to run it local and then the main things okay i don't know why this is not visible i'm going to skip that Okay, links. Okay, here we go. So the main reason this PR is in place was this top portion. So what is the interested parties about? So expressing an interest in these topics, then add your name and organization and a PR, um, and then communicating that it could grant you some rights, including 
capabilities to vote if you're listed, but it doesn't imply any obligation to you or the organization, um, including legal. Just to make sure if people need that um, from your side, we've added that. And I think the rest are kind of like links and typos. I don't know how they made it in here. So we need one more approval on this one. Let's see if anyone's done that while I've been on this. No. Any objections, comments about this one? Could I get another approval? Maybe approved in the past and got bumped off. I'll approve. What was that? I'll approve. Simon. Okay. Are you on here already, Simon? I may not be. Not seeing myself on the list. All right. Let's see. Oh, and there's five. All right. Um, Splash. Oh, there's a lot. I don't know what this alpha state's about. Yeah, it seems like last night I typed them. All right. Wow, look at all these people on this one. And we didn't have hardly any on the last. Oh my gosh. Headers, this headers thing is killing us. The blank lines. Before and after, okay. And that one's a new one. Simon, you're already in. Ian, Jeffrey. All right. Confirm and merge. And delete the branch. I forgot to do that on the last one. All right, um, Jeffrey, you ready to talk about this one? CNF definition? Nope, but I will. Oh, <laughs> all right. Let's see, what do we have right now? We have three <clears throat> approvals um, agenda. We have, I'll let someone else add this. I'd like to. Really quick too, since we're looking at this, um, we've always had this um, issue of chicken and egg where we use definitions that most of us agree are illy defined to define some of our own um, words. With the release of the CNF, or sorry, CNCF glossary, um, it has things in there like cloud native application and whatnot. Could we maybe put something in that says we are going to adopt those and if we feel that they're inadequate, we would work at that level for some of the more non-CNF specific terms. I think it would be good to try to work with the global as much as possible. Um, I'm actually supposed to have a call with um, Catherine and this is Catherine and Jason, right here, Jason Morgan, who are leading on this. They had a talk during uh, KubeCon, so I wanted to get some feedback on what they're doing and talk with them about the cloud native principles papers and stuff. But I, I think it'd be a good idea to 
try to push as much upstream so it's global to all of CNCF. Yeah, I think if we disagree with those terms or we don't feel they go far enough, we should be, this group should kind of advocate across the CNCF holistically to get like, you know, our thoughts, wants, desires out there. But then it's a lot less work on us and we don't have to deal with conflicting points of view if our glossary is as CNF specific as possible and we just adopt terms where it makes sense. All right, so this one is still about, um, or the PR is about the CNF definition. And I, th I think the tie-in with this would be what you have here, a cloud native network function is a cloud native application. So then what is a cloud native application? Um, and there's some of that over here. What is, this is a cloud native app. So what is a cloud native application? And then we go on to <clears throat> be explicit and say it's this application is uh, implementing network functionality. So there's lots of applications out there. And this one is about network functionality. The CNF consists of one or more microservices. So here we're really expanding on what a cloud native application. So this could say, and they don't, they don't have all these details, but we're trying to be more explicit. This still could be good, um, Jeffrey. And I'd like to hear your thoughts because we are talking about best practices and they're not really getting into best practices. So we could say that we're expanding on what they have. So taking advantage of cloud resources and scaling capabilities and all these other things, and then how to do it. This would be the best practices and thinking cube native. So a CNF consists of one or more microservices which can be delivered and has been developed using cloud native principles, including loose coupling, immutable infrastructure, declarative APIs, and a repeatable deployment process. Do we have any more approvals while we're sitting on the call? Are there more comments and thoughts? Um, I, I guess I wonder why we need to talk about microservices. Are we referencing a specific architecture? I just pulled that out of the tug white paper. Um, so I don't know, once again, this is the whole, it does the uh, glossary have what a microservice is? I mean, you could look at an entire like full network function itself as a microservice within a network ecosystem, right? Like a switch is providing. So, I mean, you get into all these weird layers of abstraction. Um, I, I don't care if we pull stuff out. I just grab stuff first from the principles paper, then from the tug paper. Um, at some point though, I do think we should be more explicit. Like I like the glossary definition. It's kind of the stuff that Ian always harps on around it runs in a cloud, <laughs> which is good like at a broad level, but then, um, you know, what is the CNF itself just saying it's a network function that runs in a cloud? I mean, that is technically an accurate definition. I don't know if it's a useful definition though. Well, that would be a, a cloud network function, but if we want to specify what makes it cloud native specifically, um, I don't know if the architecture is part of that. It's more about behavior, but I, <laughs> I don't know. This could be a starting point and we can keep iterating, right? Yeah, and I mean, I agree that maybe it talks about the verbiage could be cleaned up maybe. And maybe we don't approve this right now um, or we do, we approve it and then we do more stuff, but maybe it could be, it should be more, um, instead of consists of one or more microservices, it can be consumed as a microservice, right? And, um, but I mean, things like um, loose coupling, I mean, that it doesn't say that your services inside have to be loosely coupled. It just says it includes loose coupling. And I'll be honest, I'll fight that one that it should be in there. Like all these like statically mapped um, service chains, all these statically mapped services, et cetera, like makes things so really, really hard. I, I guess this, this definition, if the glossary is supposed to be definitions, we're, we're already including 
possible suggestions, best practices for reaching, you know, the goals. But um, uh, I didn't. I in terms of accepting this PR or not, I'm actually in favor of accepting a lot. I we can always add more and more PRs later. I my advice would be to iterate quickly <laughs> and keep adding more and more iterations. Um, so even if I don't, I'm not entirely happy with what I see here, I would still approve it and think of it, okay, this is a contribution and uh, it's a good contribution and we'll, we'll keep moving forward. Yeah. I mean, I'm also down with doing honestly, it. Honestly, I would rather we make attempts to work with a definition and see how its shortcomings causes difficulties than basically endlessly argue in the pull request. Even again, right, right I, I have my own um, reservations in terms of any CNF definition, but I think the answer to that is there probably isn't a perfect definition. That's part of the problem. Well, sure, I'm going to make a way. Uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, like, it's good to discuss this stuff, though, because, I mean, I just pulled that out. I mean, yes, I, like, helped build that originally in the jug, but I agree that it does force architectural opinion in there. So maybe we just move all of the specific references out of there, like microservices loosely coupling or declarative APIs, and we just boil it down purely to um, it follows cloud-native principles, and those can be discussed off-site, and that I do think that um, it being – you know, a repeatable deployment process. That is a behavior that we want out of it. That's not a let, let, um, let, let, specific let's, let's implementation find, thing. Yes, let's narrow this down, right? Cloud native principles are two different sets of things that people tend to conflate. One is what it does and one is how it's built. Now, repeatable deployment is a thing that it does, but microservices is a, a thing about how it's built. Um, I think the former is actually a lot more useful than the latter. Yeah. If you, if you look at some examples. The, didn't we say that we would link to the CNCF uh, definitions for now? I, I know we did. We've talked about this and I, I'm a vote against because I don't think the CNCF definition defines cloud native. I think it defines things that you recognizably see in cloud native applications in today's world, rather than defining what cloud native means. The, so it's a work in progress. The new definitions, not the def, the main CNCF um, definition doc at the top level, this glossary project, I think is the reference, but we have never um, really talked about this because this is brand new and it's I've already had multiple people that are working on this say that it's just a start it's not I mean I, I know this says completed but it's not covering everything that we've we've already been going into Tao I like what you said earlier about iterating quickly um you know, when, when kind of picking apart this definition or what Jeffrey gave, right, is it, it could be argued that um, if you take an example, like um, uh, a control plane network, essentially like Calico or Cilium or something like that, that is comprised of microservices. Um, so it's somewhat easily, arguably, um, but easily, um, link to kind of what uh, network looks like existing and it could be iterated on later I'm kind of the mindset that a contribution is a good contribution in sparks debate at least yeah I so I, I I'll add another point specifically about the um, the other glossary <laughs> that's a work in progress Taylor as you said I I think it's good for us to define cloud native for the terms of the work group so I'm actually not necessarily I'm in favor of referencing maybe the other glossary, but I think in terms of defining what a CNF is, we can define what cloud native, cloud native means for specifically for CNFs because it's not just a regular application. Um, and I wonder, I wonder too, you know, I'm, I'm thinking out loud here that it it could be a matter of degree, right? There's not a there's not a clear 
suddenly you look at a network function, okay, this is a true CNF, or this is partially cloud native, or it's cloud native in some ways and not very cloud native in other ways. So maybe the definition should be about criteria, even a list of criteria that, that would work in terms of, okay, you know, we, we, we either cover all the criteria for a network function or not. Um, and to an extent, it could be aspirational in terms of becoming a very good, a very cloud native network function, right? Um, so I, I'm, I'm not sure myself, I'm thinking out loud and, and uh, maybe I'll turn my thoughts into a PR as well. <laughs> so we could, uh, um, it, it would be great, I think, if multiple people took a stab at this and maybe we can kind of come together, uh, bring together different ideas from different people into something that uh, ends up being helpful. In the end, this is supposed to be a helpful definition. Scroll down, Taylor. Yeah, so on that, I, I took a bunch of stuff out real quick. I'm, I'm a fan of the move fast, but I also don't want to just put junk in there. So I stripped a bunch of stuff out with the hopes of us having a more neutral starting point. We can just put more PRs against it. I don't know if this helps. It definitely helps. I mean, <laughs> it's it, it, it's uh, pro probably um, we are writing definitions and some documents, uh, but we are still on the GitHub. And if you look at uh, how the, the code evolution uh, happens. Uh, actually, it's exactly the iterative process. The first commit is always something that's maybe half-baked and then it gets uh, expanded by community, but it doesn't prevent it uh, from being a commit or being uh, pushed. But I would vote yeah. in favor of uh, really having a decent so not the garbage uh, things in, but having a decent, well-rounded uh, definition, input, uh, whatever we, we are committing and then iterating on that. To be clear, this is not garbage. <laughs> I think this is, uh, this is useful. I think this is a useful starting point. Uh, we're already discussing it. So um, I, I would accept this PR myself. Yeah, are same you, same from my side. Where are you saying you would accept it, Tal? How it was written, Jeffrey Pitt before, or? or oh, uh, I, yeah, I'm accepting. I like Jeffrey. The current uh, suggested change that we're seeing by Jeffrey is the one that I prefer to remove those uh, architectural uh, elements, but. Um, yeah, and we don't even have to squash things, right? Because it's kind of nice to see the history as well. Um, I, I'm making a meta comment here. I think everybody who makes a contribution makes a commit. That's good, you know, it, it's okay to have a long commit log. <laughs> uh, we can see the differences and we can see who contributed what. Exactly like source code, right? Some of these properties are stuff that are listed when we, if you dig through the glossary, the definitions over here, um, they have all sorts of stuff, including talking about microservices and loose coupling and immutable infrastructure is, is all part of this. So these would be properties that you would see. It doesn't mean that, um, I guess if, if you had a single, well, actually these are all high level. So you, you may not use every best practice and I guess it may not have every property if it's not actually part of it. But if, if you are implementing a feature and there is a, a property that you would expect to see in a cloud native application that's implementing that feature, then it seems like those would be there. There is, I think I there's think, a Taylor, though, mm -hmm. we got a, Go we got to take in mind like scope and audience. So when we wrote this for the tug, it was when we were trying to intentionally opinionate and provide context with the definition. 
versus, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I know why you want them in there. Um, my hope would be though, that like the best practices that feed off of this would be where we, we have, you know, best practices that show you should be loosely coupling. But I mean, unless we're giving a very, very verbose definition and trying to shape opinion within the definition itself, um, you know, it's like the news. Are we reporting the news or are we giving a, a syndicated opinion on something kind of deal? Like, what is our goal with this glossary? Is it to just provide baseline context or is it to kind of shape influence um, opinion from those outside of our small collective here when they come in and read this stuff? I actually would prefer kind of more the just generic news standpoint, you know, now that I've had time to stew on this and then let the best practices try to guide people towards loose coupling immutable infrastructure, et cetera. And um, I did leave cloud native principles, you know, as a development consideration in there, which I think should also kind of, I don't know, um, imply that some of these things are followed. But I, I, I see where Tal's coming from, where like a definition that's already subscribed or prescribing uh, architectural considerations kind of puts you in a box when you start to go out and explore and decide what you are and aren't going to build. All right. It sounds like you're a is your PR, so I'm going <laughs> to commit this here, at Jeffrey. And it sounds like your approach, because this is your PR. You can, um, the your approach would be to address all of the properties that we were thinking would be principles. What are what are the cloud native principles? Not whether these are best practices in general for networking application, but what are the best practices if you're building a cloud native application? And no, would you just lose Taylor? I think we did. Yeah, yeah sure looks like it. Yeah. I, I'll use that to for add the record. <laughs> oh go ahead. I was I was going to say, I reserve the right to change my mind in a week from now and put in a new PR because that's <laughs> how iteration works, right? <laughs> I, I believe so. Um, I, I want to add a point to what you said, Jeffrey, about you know reporting the news. Um, and it goes back to a point er very early on that Shane made where you know he's, we had this big argument if CNF really means container, right? And uh, we all agree that it doesn't. But... Um, we also have to acknowledge that people use the term CNF already very, very widely. And often it simply means a network function running in Kubernetes, that's it. It doesn't talk about if it's running in a good way or if it works correctly with Kubernetes or, or anything else. So, so, so I guess I'm saying that for, for our purposes, um, it should be descriptive, right? And should describe how people are actually using it. And then we can say, well, how do you build a good CNF? <laughs> and that's not part of the glossary. That's one of the goals this, that this whole uh, work group is aiming for, I think, right? Do we have Taylor back? Yeah, I'm back. I, don't, I have no idea what happened with my connection there. Um, I've committed that change it's, I, I don't know where I cut out, but it, it sounded like your approach, Jeffrey, was to tackle all of the properties that would be part of cloud native applications and the best practices as those are going on. Then we, those get added, immutable infrastructure and everything. So do you want to have something like this cloud native application a link, there's the reference to linking like that. Um, so real quick too, before we do this, let's chat with the group here is, um, do we wanna do in-band links like that? Or if the, the main thing, you know, we put um, a little, uh, I was gonna say glossary, but this is the glossary, little index at the bottom, you know, linking like, um, for like the Kubernetes definition, I go and I link to kubernetes.org, their docs and stuff, just to show people that I didn't create my own definition for Kubernetes. I don't know if we want to do um, in-band citations um, with the links like that, or if we want to like point to something at the bottom. I have no opinion as long as we're citing our work and showing that we're not just, you know, pulling stuff out of thin air. 
Uh, why not in band? Uh, link it where it's re relevant so people can follow the uh, follow it in context. That's fine with me. And then I'd say we commit this, Taylor, and then we do a follow on PR to him, you know, just get that consistent with the other pieces. I'm going to try to write a PR for this too. I, I want to take a stab at <laughs> trying to do this. Uh, we'll see how it works. Tal, did you accept my invite so I can add you as a reviewer? You said you're ready to approve. Um, sure, let, let me check. Did you do that just now? Or a little while ago. I should have accepted it. Let me, let me see if I can approve. Brandon, I think you said you're ready to approve, so I've added you. Yeah, I'll approve that now. I also approve it. Something is wrong in the definition right now. It ends and then there is a period and a new sentence that just says a CNF has been developed but as a part of the definition. I think we need to relook at the sentence. Where is that? In this definition, okay. if, you look at, if you go and look under the definition, yeah, mm -hmm. files change, that's fine. Go, go under. So it's two sentences now. And the first sentence is fine. The second just starts and says a CNF has been developed using cloud native principles. We are and defining allows, and allows for. I understand repeatable. that, but should should the sentence start with something else? Because um, I think if you just simply change it to a CNF um, has been developed or should be developed. I'm sorry. Yeah, should something be developed. Like exactly. Yeah, yeah, that changes. It's the yeah. it's the context. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not has been or should be a CNF is developed or. Yeah, has. that's fine. You know, should be or is or yeah. Yeah. Yep, fair enough. Good what catch. Do we want? Ian. Is language. Just is. I mean. Yeah. So odd passive voices and and future will be doesn't really make a definition. That, that tells you what a CNF is, which is what we're trying to do in a definition. All right, that's still passive voice, but take it anyway. It's still better than has been, so. Okay, um, a CNF is developed using cloud native principles and allows for repeatable deployment process. Why are we keeping this last? Isn't this last part of cloud native principles as well? Yes, it is. No, that. That's a desired behavior, though. Yeah, not... but this isn't the place for desired behaviors, is it? Isn't best practice the place for desired behaviors? That's the whole point. Right. That's what I'm thinking. If we're removing all the rest and remove the... No, so, I mean, I'm not saying that we have to keep this in here, but a desired behavior is not a best practice. A best practice is an implementation to get a bit, like desired behavior. Like me saying I want a repeatable process, the deployment process isn't a best practice. That's just telling you what I want. It doesn't tell me right. how to get it. Okay, that's right. so a, a use case. So there's... Uh, you, ahead, the, the, prob the problem with this is we're codifying things that are neither a use case just, nor just a access. best practice. Iterate fast and get the PR in. We can keep adding to it. I'm, I'm down with axing it. Well, we could turn it into an example, which I would be good with. For example, to enable yep. a. Maybe we can make some change. And I'm, I'll put it in the chat, just a second, a suggestion.
Uh, it doesn't like when I do British but spelling. All right. Well, it, again, I'll How's say that, that this is a hey, little bit prescriptive. You know, um, you know, not all CNFs are developed with cloud native principle. We're, we're kind of stating what a CNF should be <laughs> at best. Uh, but I, again, this glossary is, glossary is supposed to be useful for us, right? So it's a lot of times we're going to be talking about CNFs that might not be developed using cloud native principles very well, but they're still part of our deployment and we're still working with them. Um, so those are, those are the idea is they wouldn't be cloud native network functions. Yeah. Yep. Taylor, I put something in the chat of rewording, if you will, particularly okay. if you're using, using repeatable deployment process as an example. So. Again, a suggestion only, so. Well, I guess, well, what is it? If you have a network function running in Kubernetes and containers and it's not developed using proper cloud native principles, what would we call that? Well, it's just a VNF a network function as a, yeah. or appliance as a containerized network function. Yes, bear in mind the CNF literally means a container. Well, it, I mean, this is not the definition of a containerized network function. This is the definition of a cloud native network function. Yeah, I mean, am I? Yeah, I'm answering to Taylor's comment about like if it's yeah not following the cloud native principles then. I mean, the, the uh, one angle to look at that is uh, actually, uh, you know, why we are at all considering and then looking for a CNFs. And this is uh, then coming to the, to the point where you have a unified cloud infrastructure in a CSP, mm. which has a certain properties. And these properties are like a reference, uh, not, not a reference, but they are, they are hard reference. And cloud native network functions are those that uh, are able to run uh, in such an environment that do not require some specialties and so on. If it's not running on, on such an environment, uh, then it could be called appliance, it could be called silo solution, it could be like Kubernetes based network function or whatever else, but it doesn't fulfill the purpose of running on an unified uh, infrastructure. Well, I, I would suggest then that we add that to the glossary. We we, def we think of a way to talk about those things uh, and find a name that we all agree with. <laughs> uh, make yeah. a take on it. Yeah. In a in a separate. Uh, uh, a KNF K is not bad. A Kubernetes network function, because <laughs> um, that also includes uh, things, for example, running virtual machines in Kubernetes, etc. So. Um, um, Create a PR for that, Tal. All right, um, yeah, I'll, 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 I will, yeah. And yeah. by the way, I do see you added me, but for some reason I'm not a reviewer on this PR. Maybe it's because I didn't. I'll, I'll add you onto this in just a moment. Um, Pankai had this in the Zoom chat, which um, merges those two sentences. A cloud native network function is a cloud native application developed using cloud native principles that implements network functionality. I'm okay with that definition. And that can run in a CSP's cloud. Specific to an implementation, or maybe I would say provides network functionality. Um, that implements provided network functionality. I think provides what? network functionality is better. Actually, I agree implement provides. When we say implements, what does provided at the after that mean? I would say just get rid of provided implements network functionality, simpler. Okay, that's what we already have. I, I meant to replace implements with provide. That's what I meant, that provides network functionality. All 
What do you think? Yeah, that's clear. A, a CNF is a cloud native application developed using cloud native principles that provides network functionality. <laughs> We've kind of boiled it down to uh, the, the simplest, but it, it works, yeah. I think. And really, you could get rid of this develop use. We're only putting develop using cloud native principles because it doesn't specifically say it over here, but we do want to say that. You're not a cloud native application if you don't follow cloud native principles. I you can be a that. containerized. You can even run on Kubernetes, but if you don't follow the principles, then you're not a cloud native application. And I'll... <laughs> If we're, if we're getting uh, really finicky about this, and it's not so much a matter of being developed using those principles, it's it's a matter of functioning using those principles. Um, exhibits those principles. Oh. Right, exhibiting the <laughs> principles, correct. I, uh, they, I'm I'm sure, I don't know why exhibits I cloud native properties then. If it's, you, can't, it's, you can't exhibit the principles. It's, I think exactly. developed, using the principles is fine. Yeah, exactly. You can't exhibit a principle. So. Just refresh, Taylor. Yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, Tal, you're there. Um, I, I added Brandon before. Oh, I see you're still here, kind of, Brandon. You're on there. I, yeah, I see, yeah, I see listed, it now. So. I need to refresh. Right, I'm going to refresh as well and make sure I can modify that if we're down to the last, hopefully, iteration. If you want to add me, I'll approve it also. Um, the implements. This is not the version. Okay, let's try it again. Here we go. That provides network functionality. Or did we decide to change developed to, uh, I mean, we can remove that whole developed using cloud native principles. It's, it's simply <laughs> the simplest definition. It's, it's a cloud native application that provides network functionality. No, 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 no. I, I agree with Taylor's statement that it, if it doesn't, if you haven't developed using cloud native principles, then it's not cloud native. I think that's the whole point. Well, we're linking here to cloud native application, so. It, right, but they don't say that in their definition yet. Okay. They may by end of week after I work with them, but right now they All don't. Right. All right. My name doesn't have a Y at the end, it has a J, sorry. Sorry, what was that? P-A-N-K-A-J, not Y. Ah, sorry. No, no, that's okay. I think, yeah, on the keyboard, there's a typo. Okay, um, all right. So did Jeffrey drop? Yeah, yeah, to drop. I have, okay. I'm gonna, what is this? Um, simplifying. All right. All right. That's there. Hopefully. I'm going to check one more time. That's what we want. Cloud a cloud native network function. Okay, it's a a cloud native network function as a cloud native application linking to the upstream global CNCF docs developed using cloud native principles that provides network functionality. I probably should have put a comma in here. Um, but yes, to, and to separate can, that. Yeah, and to be consistent, maybe cloud native should be lowercase in C and N. That was my mistake. Yeah, I'm, I'll make that um, change. I hate to do anything else. We're at the top of the hour, y'all. Um, I think we should drop. We have enough approvals. I'm going to 
I'll send this to everybody, but I'll make the change for the capitalization to be consistent and have that in the commit. And then I think we're good. Uh, the next time we're here, maybe we can talk with um, folks about the new use cases. So we have a stateful and a 5G use case. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.